come once again to discuss things. Everyone, welcome to another episode of Geeky Gentlemen. I am Super Two. Joining me today is Rasco of Rasco's Mind Life. Hello, Rasco. Get out of my face. Yeah, get out of Rasco's face. This is a podcast. You're not allowed to be all up in his face. Um, before we get started, I've been neglecting to do this, but I want you, the listeners, to know you can download episodes of Geeky Gentlemen. Listen on the go. There's a link in the description. To download this episode. You can download older episodes by request. Just uh, check out the Geeky Gentleman playlist. Leave a comment on an old episode, and it will be uploaded for your listening pleasure. Rasco, we're here today to talk about a fan series. What fan series are we talking about? Um, I, I forget the name, but it's like a Civilizations fan series um by yeah. door monster or white lightning i guess they they had a name change at some point um yeah. and this is just one of those things that, like a single video of it popped up in my recommendeds at you one watched point. it and, all yeah I, I i watched like one video and was like oh that's kind of funny if they did more we could maybe do an episode on it and then i realized oh they have like a ton more and so, yeah, as as someone that, like, really enjoys watching Civ Let's Plays and playing Civ myself, I thought that these were absolutely hilarious. Resco, what's your background on Civ? So, this is a game, I've heard of the game a million times, I've seen it being played in YouTube videos before, I've never played it myself. Mm-hmm. So I know of the game. I've seen like what the interface of the game looks like. I just have never played the game. Okay, and so with that context, how did you react to these videos? I was able to kind of like project past experiences that I've had with other kind of series like this that are based off of like a video game where it's kind of just like making fun of video games and like little specific things that you might only know if you play the games. Mm -hmm. And so even though like I really clearly wasn't understanding a lot of the references i still felt like these were pretty funny especially with some of like the actors deliveries of what they were saying i thought that the writing was pretty good Mm -hmm. i thought they were they overall seemed like something that i would have enjoyed had i been a civilization fan yeah and that's that's definitely the reaction i had is just they they talk about a lot of the very specific things in civilization that are kind of silly kind of stupid like they have the whole episode about science victory yeah and yeah you can like you can get steam powered boats like the game i play i played a little bit of civ 4 and i played civ 2 on my old laptop but my main exposure to civ is civilization revolution the console game and in that you can get steam powered ships before you research combustion <laughs> And so that just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just, like, one of those really funny little specific things about, like, the the fact that this game doesn't really apply one-to-one to how, you know, actual things in civilization work. Mm-hmm. But it's it's always really entertaining. Um, and there's, there's a ton of that. Uh, did the... Um, the constant references to Gandhi being a warmonger make any sense to you? No. <laughs> I just assumed that that it would make more sense to people who would play the game. It was this, like, it's this ongoing joke with Civ. In the very first Civilization game, some of the programming or whatever with Gandhi was, like, glitched out, so he was just constantly declaring war on people, <laughs> as opposed to being at all peaceful. And so they just made him that way for the rest of the games. He's just always, like, a warmonger. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah, and so it's, like, really funny to see this where, you know, they got the entire world sitting there trying to figure out what to do about Gandhi like he's fucking Hitler. (laughs) That's just hilarious. Um, Actually awesome. Yeah, but I do agree with you. I think the writing is reasonably sharp here. Um... 
there are occasions where I think it's maybe a little too wordy or not not quite as witty as I, I, I feel like it thinks it is. But overall, it's got a lot of really good banter, um, and that that's always something I enjoy in dialogue. Yeah, um, it kind of felt like... Uh... I wouldn't be surprised because I don't know about like the background of the people who made this, but I wouldn't be surprised if these were these were like a bunch of people that knew each other from college or like they're in college or maybe they're in like a film program or something. Mm-hmm. Um, that has nothing to do with the quality of this. I'm just saying, like, I wouldn't be surprised if this that that was like the backstory behind this series. Yeah, I think that kind of is in some way, shape, or form what's going on with it. I watched a couple behind-the-scenes videos that they had for the different episodes, and it appears to be that way that, like, they know film students or whatever and and stuff like that. Uh, I think they're actually, like, for some of the bigger episodes, I think they actually, like, scouted actors out and stuff like that, which is cool. Um, And it is just, like, one of those things where... It's so charming because it's something you could just make with a group of friends, but there's... That's not to, like, downplay it, because it's still pretty elaborate with all the things they managed to pull off. Like, even the costumes actually look like, you know, a reasonable representation of what the costumes in a lot of the games look like for different characters. Um, Yeah, no, I mean, I don't think that this needs any more money to be good i think it works just as it is mm-hmm. uh okay so what was an episode that like really really worked for you where you you found it the funniest i really like the episode where the guy was just like hey you're on the you're on our border you need to step <laughs> back and he's like i'm not attacking you i'm just a scout and like there's just like all of these guys around him and they're just like i'm not attacking you and then he kills him and then they go to war Yep. he initiated it. I thought that was really funny. <laughs> yeah, and, like, that is that is a tactic in, in a lot of the games. Like, in uh, in Civ Rev, I don't know if this is the case for the others, but in Civ, Civ Rev, democracy is a really useful government because it increases your science and gold output by, like, 50%. Um, but you cannot just declare war unilaterally because this is a fantasy world where that's actually how democracy works. Um, that that you can't declare war unilaterally. So, like a tactic that people will use either in multiplayer or just against the computer is sending like you know non-important units around the computer to bait them into attacking, so that you can have a war and then immediately like send in your armies to go crush them. Um, and that's just like it's really funny to see that all play out here with. Like, that's exactly what it is. It's like, oh, no, I'm just a a settler walking around. I'm I'm just a caravan. No worry. No reason to worry about me. I'm not scouting out your unit. Your city is trying to figure out, like, good positions for my armies at all. (laughs) Yeah. Oh. One thing I really liked is all the running jokes in this. Like, boat Mormonism. Yeah. Um, (laughs) <laughs> that's really funny because that's not something in Civ Rev. Uh, I guess in like some of the other games, you can create and name religions, which is amazing. <laughs> um, and that was just yeah, like a lot of stuff. Like this is a funny thing. This is a funny thing. Uh, what's something for you that just like didn't work? Something that didn't work. Um, I don't know. That's difficult. Like I feel like I'd actually have to know Civ to point something like that because there are things that like i don't know if like i I don't know it's really hard for me to say something that doesn't work for me because i just don't know enough about the subject matter of this and i don't really have any problems with how it's made gotcha so none of the episodes like fell flat for you or anything yeah no not really most of the episodes i could it was interesting because like for the most part I know enough about video games and game mechanics to where like like sometimes i could kind of piece together what the joke was probably about uh-huh. So, like, for example, with that one just about, like, baiting in people to start a war with you, like, that kind of idea, like, kind of just naturally made sense to me while watching the episode. And so I'm sure even in the episodes that I preferred less, like, I would still, I would, like, after playing the game, I'd have to have played the game to know how I actually feel about some of the episodes, I guess. Gotcha. And, like, I don't think there was anything where it, it didn't capture the, the spirit of civilization or anything like that. 
there were just some episodes where I thought, like, the joke wasn't quite as funny. Like, I really like the doing something about Gandhi episode. When they do the exact same thing with the World Congress and it's all just them voting on stuff, that's kind of funny, but it, it loses some of its charm because they just have a lot of the same world leaders. Um, yeah. That one, it just, it didn't quite work as well for me. Like, it was still funny when they're sitting there talking about banning crabs, but just, I don't know, like, the the first one was so good, especially with the nuclear explosion and all that stuff, that the other one just kind of felt a little, eh. Um, maybe that's just me. Um, it's, it's that thing of, like, you don't do a joke a second time unless it builds, and I didn't really feel like it built from the last one. Mm. Um, and then, like I said earlier, there's some dialogue here and there that it just feels like it's a little, a little too wordy. Um, when it comes to writing comedy, I feel that you have to be really, really sharp with your dialogue. It has to be the fewest words possible to get to the joke. Um, and, you know, some of the stuff, like, with the uh, We Love the King Day episode, where they're sitting there protesting, it just felt like it, it took a little while to get to the punchlines. Okay. Um, so I know that that stuff kind of bothered me, but, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot in this that I, I really, really enjoyed, and, like, they've been making these for, like, three years now, which is kind of insane. Go them. Yeah, I mean, you gotta respect that. Uh, I don't know, Rasko, you take us somewhere, then. Um, I was gonna say that I thought some of the... Like, when, I just want to go back to the speci- some specific little bits about the acting that I really liked. I felt like the guy who was probably the lead in the most of the... In, in most of them, there was the one... There mm-hmm. was the... He was, uh, like, the news anchor in that episode... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that guy, he was in, like, a bunch of them. Uh, I thought that that actor was really good. I thought that he he reminded me a lot of, like, um, like Jesse Eisenberg. <laughs> like, you could almost literally give Jesse Eisenberg some lines of dialogue in this, and it would have sounded exactly how people write dialogue for him in, like, every movie that he's in. Yeah, yeah, and I'm pretty sure that's the guy that writes and directs all these. It makes um, sense if it is. It like, yeah, I, that that makes sense now. The delivery like perfectly fits the way it's written from him yeah. a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really good. Uh, and just, I like all the the fun that the actors have with the accents at times. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know what that accent is, but the guy playing King Solomon the Magnificent <laughs> yeah. is hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> I denounce you. Yeah. That is what soldiers are for. They hurt Gandhi, and then they die. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a really funny line. I really like that. Rasko, I denounce you. I denounce you, Rasko. No! Um, yeah, yep, I, I denounce Rasko. Let it be known. No! Um, and, you know, this is one of those things where we, we mention this here and there with different fan films and fan series. This is something that wouldn't work... Like, anywhere, like, maybe you could convince a sketch comedy show to let you do a sketch about a video game. Yeah. But never Civ. Yeah, you you know what? It is important that you made that point. This is why you don't want YouTube to become Netflix. This is, like, why you don't want YouTube to become a content creator as much as just a platform for content creators. Mm Mm-hmm. Because... That's the whole point. That's why YouTube was a success. It was that if you could get the resources, you could make something and you didn't have to get permission from someone to make it. Like that's why that's what's cool about YouTube is that you can find a market for things that was previously way too specific. Mm -hmm. But because it's like an Internet kind of just big mass of people that have like different overlapping communities that they belong to like gaming or geek culture or movies or whatever like you to some degree have some of those things overlapping that's what the point of things 
like YouTube were. It was that so that you could have series like this that were really specific, that were really short, that were probably really cheap to make, and they could have a following. And that was the point. Don't fuck it up, YouTube. Yeah, and this is this is just one of those things where it would never be made. I'm trying to like we talked about that with something else. Um, yeah, we just did. I can't a remember. very hyper specific fan thing that you'd never get uh, a studio to to back and and fund. I'm trying. Shit, I can't remember what it was. If I go through the videos, I'd probably go, oh, that one. But but it's it's just one of those things. Like this is something that can only exist as a fan effort, and that's what makes it so much fun to watch. Is that it's a fan thing. Um, and they're clearly fans of the game. That's, that's yeah. the other thing. It's like, I feel like a lot of people will make like Mario parodies or, or whatever, but they're, they're clearly not like actually Mario fans. Mm-hmm. They just have like really basic jokes that like maybe the wider culture thinks about with Mario, but the, like fans actively know that's not the case. Mm-hmm. Uh, to jump off Mario, it's kind of like, it's like when... Things are making fun of Star Trek, and people say, beam me up, Scotty. It's like, yeah, it's kind of what everybody thinks, but that's not what really... That was never actually said in Star Trek, so no Trek fan would make that joke. Mm -hmm. Um, This has that. It's like, this is something that is hyper-specific, but it clearly knows what it's talking about because it's making jokes actively about the, the gameplay of Civ with the fact that, you know, you pick a leader to to be when you play a civilization and no matter what government you choose or anything you never stop being that leader so you are in a sense god (laughs) you're this immortal ruler they have all these jokes about that it's like oh no i wouldn't be a worker for an immortal god king for twelve thousand years unless i was a slave or if i loved doing it it's definitely one of those things (laughs) that was really good we do this news broadcast for our immortal leader uh, you know, peace be with him. Like, that's just really funny. Uh, because that's, like, such a weird thing to think about. Yeah. No, but, I, like, I know when I'm playing Civ, because it's, like, a four-hour game, I'll sit there and occasionally I'll let my wa- mind wander and be like, okay, so what's the, like, history book of this world look like right now? <laughs> in, in 1325, Aristotle helped me figure out gunpowder. Okay, that's weird. Uh, the Indians declare, or I remember one game I played as Montezuma of the Aztecs and I conquered the Spanish and I was like, historical revenge. Uh, so just stuff like that's really funny. And they, they play with that like crazy in this and that, like that whole episode, it's like a documentary. That was hilarious. Yeah, Um, that was awesome. (laughs) It's funny because they actually use real like footage from different eras of history. Um, and they show the one of the most infamous shots of the nuclear early nuclear age, which is a mushroom cloud and a bunch of soldiers walking toward it. And this has nothing to do with anything, but I thought that was like really I've I've always found that footage horrifying because that was before people understood radiation. So they thought they'd be they thought those guys were fine to just walk toward a mushroom cloud after the detonation. Oh, that's creepy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's really creepy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's weird. Like, that looks like it's staged or something, but no, it's it's a real thing. Um, that's actual government footage. Um, so it's just, it's always weird to see, like, that pop up. But regardless, I don't know, I, I love I love Civilization. This does, like, a great job of capturing all the, the kooky, silly stuff about Civ that I love. Um, trying to think what else to say. I guess the episode for me that, like, the the second meeting of the, the world leaders wasn't, like, really good, but it, it was still kind of funny on its own, just in the wider context. I didn't think it worked. I think the episodes that, that is actively the worst for me is the uh, the episode with the two scouts, where they're, they're going for the ruins. Oh, okay. Um, I just didn't, like, maybe it's because... I don't have scouts in Civ Rev, so I don't really know a lot about them, but, uh, I don't know, like, the actors don't, or actresses don't really deliver much for me, the the delivery feels kind of awkward. I watched, um, one of the behind the scenes for the, the first World Congress thing, and he talked about how 
he just sets up a bunch of cameras and then has everybody read their lines once and then edits it all together so it's no no one's playing off of each other Mm -hmm. and i'm not sure if that's exactly what he did with the the two actresses in the scouts episode but it certainly feels that way because it just there's a bit of an awkward sense of delivery and there's there's not quite a there's there's a a lack of of rapport yeah it's um, interesting it's interesting I, I noticed that in a lot of comedy things you do one of two things so you you do the like when you go and see a lot of comedies today a big reason they all feel so generic is because they they do just kind of the actors are going to ad lib, so we're just going to try to get the ad lib on camera. So they just kind of put up a million fucking cameras in a room so that they have an angle for everything that one of the actors could say to the other. Uh-huh. Or they'll do kind of like the Seth Rogen uh, comedy thing of you put him on like a couch with whoever he's talking to so that you get that like natural chemistry back and forth without having to have a bunch of cameras set up. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. I was just gonna say. So like, it, those are like, uh, it, it can be tough to get that chemistry on screen naturally, especially yeah, for something that's a comedy. Yeah, and like you know, Will Ferrell's movies certainly aren't like the best, most comedic genius things ever. But when you look into how they make those movies, the the actors are just sitting there trying to make each other laugh. Mm-hmm. And and so that creates some really funny improv moments. Um, this is something that is very, very tightly controlled dialogue. And it certainly works, but I'd be curious to see them try an episode that's a little more loose. Um, just to see how it goes. Because there is a certain level of a disconnect between the actors. Certain... Um, line reads don't feel supernatural compared to the what they're responding to um like in that the the let's do something about gandhi episode um catherine and, and solomon have a couple exchanges where like he's pretty intense and kind of like intimidating and and on the verge of yelling and it certainly fits Catherine's character in that, that she's just all laid back and, and annoyed. But at the same time, her delivery feels too passive compared to what he's saying. And I feel it's because they shot all of his lines and then shot all of her lines or whatever. Yeah, that's that's probably the case. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know. I, I There's nothing wrong with doing... A little bit of that, but I, I do feel some level of interaction between actors is important because the actors are not just talking heads. They're they're supposed to be there to actually add something to the craft. Um, and and I think it's kind of weird to just take them out of it as much as possible like that. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> Well, what else can we talk about with this one? Uh, you know, it's it's funny. There's a lot of content to this one, but all the episodes kind of have the same ben- have the same good things and the same bad things. There's not like yeah, th- there's not a lot of variety to discuss with it. Is the problem uh, as far as reviewing? That's not really a problem with you know watching it. Yeah. Um, hmm. Any any costumes or anything stand out to you? Any 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 of the the technical stuff, the effects stand out to you? Like it was done particularly well? Oh, I thought that um, I was surprised at how uh, you know not that like okay, so it, they were perfect for what this was. The effects used during like the religious theological conversion battle thing at the end. <laughs> <laughs> like I thought that that looked pretty confident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought that looked pretty good. Uh, it was, it was kind of like a religious DBZ. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, what else? I like the the integration of like all the cities. Um, like in the documentary episode, it's just one shot, but it it's perfect. 
of Egypt off on its own building all the wonders in the world. Yeah. And then you just get one shot at the end, and there's the Egyptian guy sitting there drinking grapes, and he's got, like, the pyramids, Statue of Liberty, Sydney Opera House, Leaning Tower of Visa, the Parthenon, just all behind him. And that's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> I really enjoyed that one. That, that, that cracked me up. It was like, oh, wow, that's, that's pretty much it. If you can just be off on your own on a big enough area of land with enough production, you can just build wonders the whole game and no one can touch you for, like, frickin' ever because it takes forever to get boats and get an army to you. Um, so that was, that was pretty hilarious. I played a game against the... Um, Against the Zulu recently where they were doing that. They just kind of were off on a big island on their own and took me to, like, the 2000s to get over there with an army so I could start fighting them. <laughs> the bastards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that that was pretty funny. There's there's just a lot of, like, in-jokes with the the game in here that, again, it's, it's perfect for a fan series. True debt. True debt. Uh, do one for XCOM. I want to see an yeah. XCOM one of these. I mean, they done. They do a lot of stuff on this channel. I uh, like. I saw there was a a Doctor Who parody video the other day. Um, that looked kind of interesting. Uh, here's here's an interesting question for you, Rasco. Ooh. Does this make you want to play Civ? To some degree, yeah. Yeah. And I would actually say, like, even without having played Civ before, there have been times where I've been like, oh, that looks like a pretty cool game. I've always had somewhat of an inclination to try Civ. Well, I know you've said you're, like, a big StarCraft fan. At some point, I think you've said that to me. Have I said that? I've played StarCraft. I, I'm, a yeah, huge, no, I... I'm, a, I'm a huge uh, XCOM fan. I've played StarCraft. Um, played some other strategy games. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, I don't know, I just, uh, that is an interesting thing to see if that can have an effect wherein you, you watching something that's kind of like a love letter to a franchise makes you want to get involved in the franchise even though you've never been before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. Trying to think of something to do to fill like two, three more minutes. We could dance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we could dance. I th- uh, all right, really, really obscure at this point. That here's something we rarely talk about. Location scouting was pretty good here. Oh yeah, that's really random. We never talk about that. Um, yeah, it's fine. I mean, they just kind of had to find fields. Yeah, find fields. But then there's like the the protest episode, and they're in front of like that weird door thing. Yeah, that's, like, that was got this cool. iron bars. It just looks kind of like perfect yeah um, and then there's like i think the only then there's the tv studio that looks pretty good um i think the only one that didn't look like very good was the um the science victory episode where they're just clearly in a kitchen <laughs> yeah it was almost kind of funny though <laughs> in kitchen. yeah i don't know it seemed like you could have gone to like a high school or whatever and shot in the science lab or something like that um, they should have had a real laboratory. They should. I don't understand why that's so much to ask for. Uh, but I don't know. It's it's like admirable that they they put the time in to go find you know these areas to go shoot this stuff because it looked pretty good. Um, okay, let's go ahead and go on to ratings. Resco, what will you rate the Civ series that Door Monster produced? I'm going to give this, just on how well I thought it was made, without really being a fan of it, this score would probably go up by .5 if I was, if, if I'd played the game. I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 4 walking out of sticks. 3.5 out of 4 or out of 5? Whoops, I meant to say out of 5. <laughs> okay. Uh, 3.4, or 3.5 out of 5 walking sticks. Yep. Yep, the settlers are always have their walking sticks. I don't understand why, but they do. Um, I can dig it. Uh, yeah, I think that I think a three point five is is perfectly fair. Um, it's not like 
blow you away or anything, but I really do enjoy watching this. It's like a really fun experience. So, yeah, I think 3.5 out of 5 uh, Gandhi nukes is is going to be my score. Um, okay, Rasco, what are we going to be talking about next time? Okay, so I have no idea what this, like, any, I have zero information about this fan film, but this is what we're going to talk about next week. Red Dead Redemption, Seth's Gold. Okay. Cool. Have you ever played Red Dead Redemption? Yes, I have. Okay, good. Then someone will will have. Alright, everyone, thanks very much for watching. Until next time, I'm the Philosopher. And I'm the Beta Bell Cock. And we are your geeky gentlemen. And we will be discussing things.